first thing that uh, you want to do when you color correct something is you want to uh, adjust the black balance, the black and white balance. But you usually start with the black balance because that takes a little, um, it's a little bit, um, not harder, but um, you start with the black, then you go to white, and then you usually have to end up back going, going back to black. So anyways, um, this is your waveform monitor. 100 IRE is uh, pure white, and zero is black. And you want to bring the pedestal, which is uh, your black point. And they each pro different programs call it different things. So you can bring it so it's just go to this. You can bring it down so it's just touching this. And if you bring if you bring it like this, it's crushing. You know, and you get uh, like kind of a weird look. And if you have it up too high, it looks a little washed out. So you know, if we reset that, see that's the original image. So you can see that it's washed out. Um, you just bring the black down. And you see it's just touching. Bring it up just a little bit. And then you can adjust the white balance, the gain right here. Push that up. And when it's all white right here, you can see that there's some clipping uh, in the original image. So you can bring that up to 100 IRE. You know, like the same thing with black. If you bring it up like that, you uh, you crush it at the top or you blow it out. And so you bring it down. So it's just touching 100 IRE. And then you can uh, really fine tune it using the gamma or the midtones. You can bring the midtones up, and then you can bring the, keep the black point down. Like it's a, it's a back and forth between the both, you know. So I'll undo both those. Um, I like to bring the gamma down, kind of give it more of a higher, uh, more contrast. You, see, you can do it that way. You can go down to levels, and say so you didn't do it uh, with the pedestal and the gain. You can go to levels, and you can adjust it this way. You could bring the black point right about here until it's about touching, and you can adjust the the gain this way or you could do a mixture of both you know kind of get a different effect you know so uh so anyways you start with the uh, white and black points and uh there's different ways you can do that you know um using the gamma pedestal and gain or levels is also a good one too and uh you can use curves to increase the contrast like doing the s curve you can boost the highlights right there and bring down the low points or you can uh, just bring everything up or everything down. Or say uh, you want a little bit more green, you can bring the green up, bring the red down, kind of put the colors this way. Yeah, so up to this point, you see it's all you. So this clip right here is uh, just a car coming around a corner. It's in a desert, and uh, desert's pretty hot. And so you can get that hot look. Um, you can add in, you know, a little bit of yellow to it. All right, so I went to full interface. And it's loading up. And then I, uh, let's reset everything. So you have your combo meter, meter right here. Um, you can go to hue offset right here and you can add yellow in that way. But as you can see, it adds yellow to everything, you know, which, you know, it depends on the look you're going for. But if you go to controls right here, you can go look at the waveform monitor, bring your black point down. So it's just barely touching. And your gain up and your black down. You know, and nothing is really pure white. I mean, you do have a quite a bit of light spots but I mean it's a past 90 RE and there's probably a little bit up here that's at 100 so um, now you can adjust the contrast bring the gain down so you can uh, split reference that or uh, split source that you can see before before and after you know I think it looks a lot better with the higher contrast and uh, if you look at the luma range you can see there's a lot of mid-tones a little bit of highlights and not very much uh, shadows. So you can go to Luma range down here and you can pull this around to uh, see what I'm trying to do right now is capture most of the car to make the car mostly a uh, shadow. All right, so I mean, that's fairly good. I mean, right this part of the car, as you can see right here, it's pretty light, you know, so if you go back this way, you go to your color wheels, you can bring the highlights to a nice yellow. You can bring your midtones 
to a yellow. So it looks a lot, you know, it looks pretty cool. And you do the split source before and after. I think that looks way cooler, more interesting. And now, uh, if you didn't do the the white and the black point, you'd have that kind of bland image, but with the higher contrast, definitely makes a huge difference. Another one is this, which is kind of a cool like uh, you know flower, and you can actually it actually works extremely well when you want to change colors or something. So. And this one, what I did was go to results. Uh, I changed the hue right here. Um, played with the color, the curves adjustments a little bit. Changed the hue and then desaturated it quite a bit. You know, so if I uh, I can hit reset. See, that's where it was. So we can look at this image right here, which is kind of a uh, useless image. We can't really do anything with it. Um, and we can actually make it look like this by white balancing it. You know, color finesse, full interface. And you can uh, go to the RGB right here. And you can adjust the white point, black point, and gamma of each individual channel of color. So if you go down here, you get your master red, green, and blue. And you can see that the red is pretty... Uh, pretty low so you can bring the red up this way actually first off the best thing to do is to adjust the pedestal of the master so that's probably good, good. the uh, blues touching right there and you can bring the gain up on the red and already that looks a little bit better bring the gamma down the gain up and you can go to blue boost the gain on the blue that's a much better image. And you can go over here. And you can raise the gain over here. So you have before and after. Huge difference. Now you have a, uh, an image that you can use where before, not so much. So with uh, secondaries, you can uh, load up color finesse and actually select out individual colors and uh, I did this by going into my secondary tab right here All right and uh, as you can see I selected uh, four different ranges of color and you can show the preview oh, and then I inverted the selection so if I uninvert it uh, you can see that I desaturated I inverted it and then desaturated it completely so now I can actually go to another secondary tab and start making some more selections. Trying to get as much as I possibly can. And change the hue on it. You can see I can adjust the luma. The chroma a little bit. There we go. So we turn them from KTMs to Kawasaki's. Not too bad. All right, so you have uh, I have the sequence right here. Um, it's pretty much just a bunch of random shots. Um, you know, this shot, this shot, this shot, little crosses all, and a fade out. Um, so it uh, absolutely makes no sense. But say you have a project and you're in a Final Cut and you're like, well, you know, I'm not working in After Effects. Uh, can't really use color for next um, and you could export it out you know with an endpoint an out point and you can file export it'll export that region um, but that in itself can cause a lot of problems and not, not to mention you're uh, loading up your computer with a whole bunch of clips that would eventually especially with high definition you might take up a lot of space with a bunch of uh, useless things after a while um, anyways so you if you have a uh, final cut or after effects at home you can download this uh, script by Popcorn Island. Um, to find it, you can type in Popcorn Island Final Cut to After Effects script, and you can download it right here. There's a tutorial right here on how to use it. 
Uh, but after you download it, uh, you'll get a script and you drop that into your script folder in After Effects. And um, pretty much how it works, not even pretty much, uh, how it works is you export this out as an X XML right here. Um, so it shows you what you have. Just keep the defaults. Okay. I'm just going to save this right on my desktop. And as send to AE. Exporting out. I can go over to After Effects. So uh, if you don't have, if you have Final Cut and After Effects, you can download uh, this Popcorn Island script. You can type in uh, Popcorn Island Final Cut After Effects uh, script. And uh, this is free. You just download it, drop it into your script folder in After Effects, and uh, you should be good to go. Um, so you go to export. Make sure you have your sequence. Uh, export XML. Okay. We'll send it, save it as open this one. Save. So uh, after you export it out of uh, Final Cut, you can um, go to File Scripts PI Final Cut to After Effects. Open this one, open that up. Um, you can import your audio tracks if you want to directly export out of After Effects, or you can uh, decide not to do that. So you can hit no. And uh, this is everything right here. So you have all your individual clips, full clips, by the way, and you have your composition, your sequence. So this is the sequence. Uh, and you even have your crossfades. Everything. Everything is there. You can even bring that in. Extend clips around. Play with everything. You can click right here on this one particular clip. You can go into color finesse. And you can totally adjust all your color uh, correction uh, things here. So, by the way, so this is the uh, dialog box when you first open up color finesse. Um, and you can do all your color correction and such. So... That's pretty cool, and you can export it out as a, uh, you can do, make movie. Another way to uh, run your uh, clips out of Final Cut that um, might be easier, um, depends on what you want to do. Um, I think it might be a little bit easier because you probably have a little bit more control over it. You can go to File, Export, XML, and we already did that. We saved it as Open This One. And you go over to Premiere, so you go to File, Import, And you can do open this one, which is an XML file. And it imports the files. And this is just a, uh, a report on any issues that might have happened. But So this is the project right here. Hit the arrow. You have all your clips, and you have your sequence. So double-click that. Sequence opens up down here. And if you zoom in, it actually shows you you have your crossfades. You know, you have everything. And if you right click it, uh, if you right click the file right here, you can replace it with the After Effects composition and send it over to After Effects uh, the same way with uh, Final Cut to Motion. Um, and you can make some, uh, even have the sound, everything on this one. So you can do it that way. You can either export it out uh, directly from Premiere or you can export it out as a Final Cut Pro XML. Uh, sure, we'll save it. And we'll save it as a tutorial. Sure. Why not? Save. And then we go over to Final Cut. File. Import. XML. Tutorial XML. And then it'll ask you a uh, destination. We'll just keep it as uh, the send to AE project. And uh, these are the, this is the default sequence settings. Um, usually works, but you might need to, uh, if you have problems, just manually adjust uh, what your sequence is. So it's our sequence back into Final Cut. So this is our sequence from Premiere to Final Cut. So uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, so uh, Color Finesse is wicked cool, and definitely check it out whenever you get a chance. Thanks.